welcome. Um, we're here today to talk about a change in the MCAT admission requirement. My name is Kendra Hawk and I am the Associate Registrar of Enrollment Management for the Undergraduate Medical Education Office and I'm joined here by my colleague Lindsay. Could you introduce yourself? Yeah, I am uh, Lindsay Jackowitz. I'm the Enrollment Coordinator for the MD program. So, Lindsay, what is new with the MCAT requirements? So we are happy to announce that for the upcoming admission cycle, we are modifying our MCAT requirements slightly. We are still requiring that every applicant achieves 125 in each section as our threshold, but now we will be allowing um, an applicant to have one score in one section of 124. Okay, great. So um, just to clarify, when we talk about there being a score of 124 allowable in one section, will it matter what section they have 124 in? Are we going to hold it against them when they apply? No, so it can be in any one section of the MCAT. It does not matter which one, as long as it's only one of the sections. Right, and that's because, as you mentioned, we do just use the MCAT as a threshold. So it's not used competitively. You meet the threshold and you move on in our application process. process. Yeah. So it's a sim quick announcement. Um, we have a few people watching. Actually, we have quite a few people watching. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in and we can uh, answer right now, or we'll also answer, we'll be watching the comments and we can answer them throughout the day. Um, I think uh, the other thing that you wanted to mention was the confidence bands. Do we use confidence bands when we're reviewing our MCAT scores? Yeah, so we do not use confidence bands in our assessment of your MCAT score. I know um, they are published on the MCAT website and some schools may use them, but we require that you achieve the score of 125 in each section with one score of 124. Right. And then I guess the last thing we might want to talk about are a couple reasons why we are making this change for this admission cycle. Um, do you care to comment on that, Lindsay? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so. We have been listening to you guys a lot um, with regards to feedback on the, our admissions requirements in writing the MCAT, and especially with the implementation of the MCAT 2015. And we wanted to recognize that it, we understand that is a significant um, amount of time and resources um, you guys put into writing the MCAT, um, both obviously financially and all the time you spent studying. Mm -hmm. Goodness. And we know also that there is a lot uh, of work ahead of you to, in order to prepare your MD application to make it competitive. So we just wanted to um, ease up a bit on that strict um, threshold and give a bit of room there. So that's that's great. And I think those are, I mean, great reasons to make a change like this. This change is very positive. It's just going to help our applicants um, and save them a lot of time. Um, we hope to see all your applications um, coming up in our new admission cycle that we're ramping up for. Um, we have some questions about more changes to the application process. So uh, we're updating our website today with some of those changes. There is a, a minor change to the grad review that we're going to have a Facebook Live with um, Hannah Lee that she can answer your questions about that. Um, and that will be on Thursday, June 27th at 2.30. We're also having our annual admission cycle recap, and that's on Tuesday, June 25th at 2.30. Um, there's no changes to the MD-PhD uh, admissions cycle, someone asked that as well, uh, except for the changes that we have to um, the MD application process. So MD-PhD is two parts parallel, so the MD side will, will change slightly this year, but the MD-PhD requirements of three reference letters and um, an academic CV will remain the same. Um, and what, did you see any other questions here? Oh, and the changes to the, um, there is a upcoming um, Ontario-wide change to reference letters and we're going to have a Facebook Live about that um, on behalf of all of the medical schools closer to the OMSAS launch date. Um, and it's nothing to have anxiety about. All of these things are that we're doing are in order to streamline our admissions process so it's less burdensome for you as our applicants and also for our uh, amazing reference letter writers out there because they do um, have a lot of work to do to make let us know how outstanding all of you are. Um, someone, so we'll, we'll reiterate the change <laughs> for Hamad, thank you for joining. Uh, and it is, well you might as well say it because I've been talking a lot. <laughs> 
Lindsay, so the roll. change again is that we are still have our uh, threshold requirement of the MCAT exam that you achieve 125, 125 in each of the four sections, but we will consider applicants who have one single score in one of the sections of 124. Mm -hmm. So that your application will proceed in our process if you have one score of 124. Yeah, one out of four. Okay, so um, I think we will log out now and uh, we're going to leave any questions about references until closer to the launch date of the OMSAS application. Um, and yes, you will still need references, uh, just the style of the submission is going to change. So we hope you have a fantastic weekend and we look forward to chatting with you more.